Samurai is a Japanese signing doujinshi manga series that will soon adapt it to an anime miniseries that was made by Gonzo in 2007 that is starring Samuel L. Jackson. In a feudal yet futuristic Japan, it is said that the one wearing the number one headband is the greatest warrior in the world and shall possess his godlike power. One man believes this theory and actually has his headband in his possession and wears it proudly. Soon after fighting countless foes, he meets his ultimate demise from an unknown swordsman who has only murdered him to attain that headband, but one thing he failed to realize, he has a son who will soon seek bloody revenge. Now I was 17 years old when I first watched this anime. Now when I watched this anime at that age, my mind was in the mind of a simpleton. And what I mean by that is, if I watch animes and it's based off something that I'm aware of, I'm going to watch it based off that theory. And by Afro Samurai, this anime is based off revenge. And by me having that mind standpoint, I watched it when I was 17 years old and I was entertained. And I was satisfied from the start to the middle and from the ending. I love this anime a lot. Now, by me watching it now, from a critic standpoint, it might be, and by me being more older and my brain being even more in an intelligence cycle of just picking things off and seeing what needs to be fixed, what needs to be addressed, what's an issue, and what needs to be mentioned when it comes to people turning a blind eye and watching things like this. I'm gonna have to say, man, that this anime is an indeed masterpiece. There was so much stuff on this mini series that I need to address pretty quickly. If you guys love a good revenge anime cycle, or at the same time, if you like mixtures of anime like Samurai Champloo, Sugar Eye Death Frenzy, or even just Kill Bill, because this anime has a good reference to Kill Bill. But honestly, it was done a lot better when it comes to the pacing of our main protagonist seeking, her, seeking revenge and us knowing how things get built up after he loses his father. You guys are going to be for a hellish ride. I guarantee you. This anime is great in all aspects. And, I, and I'm at to say right now, by me being pulled into the anime again and even and being strapped on even tighter to the roller coaster ride, I loved every single minute of it, especially the soundtrack. Now, Riza from Wu-Tang Clan got their hands on this anime, and they actually helped produce this. And I was getting a lot of good Wu-Tang vibes watching this anime. Not just by the action and by the blood and gore elements, but even by the downtime. They put some of their tracks on this anime just so they can match the frequency of us being pulled in by our main protagonist itself, Afro. And they have done a great job. And even if it wasn't for their soundtrack, I would have still got I would have still got pulled in by his character because the pacing of his character was done very very well, practically perfect in a way. From a mini series, I was skeptical of how things was gonna turn out if they was gonna be missing certain things for me to be drawn away from the anime when it comes to the pacing. But with Afro's character, they have done very well even in the beginning of the anime. His personal loss will hit you hard because Aww. it hit me hard. A lot by him losing his father and by his father being a great swordsman the way how he lost his father was so quick like it was so graphic and at the same time it was a it was it was very traumatizing I was gonna say a bit traumatizing but it's subjective what does traumatize you but by this anime showing you this in a very quick manner and some people may say it was fast paced but that's what happens when you do swordplay that is what happens when you're in a brink of battle when it comes to two deadly people two deadly swordsmen duking it out there is no pussyfooting around there is no slow time events there is no thinking when it comes to things coming close to you in you know face to face combat while you're staring death in the face it is quick it is fast paced and it is no thinking it's all about skill in context of you knowing your enemy's movements before they know yours. And by me seeing that part of the anime, I was drawn into this. And 
that's where the journey of Afro comes in by him seeking revenge of his father and by him being a child and being a grown man to this point I was pulled in from start to finish now about this anime having a lot of good blood and gore I have to compare this to Shigure I Death Frenzy again because one thing that this anime does right when it comes to the action and the good sh um the good shonen samurai feel to it is a cre creativity of how they execute these kills Shigurai Death Frenzy does this not just by combat through swords but by bare hands Afro Samurai does this as well it shows you the urban technology of how we do things if we were samurai and I can't argue with that now, I feel like if I was a samurai and if I had a big fro I probably would have done the same thing that Afro done or probably even better because by me being a graphic um, you know by me doing novels and me publishing books and stuff I figure out ways of how to get fans entertained by not just in a pulling aspect of them being engaged in the main characters but in a creative way so Afro Samurai's tactics of how he killed villains was great was entertaining creative bloody gory badass you name it you call it you're going to get entertained watching this and as for the aspect of mixtures of how you feel this anime this anime actually includes humor now by this being <laughs> by them putting their hands on this anime and them having Samuel Jackson play the role they want to show you both sides of the coin how Samuel Jackson would be serious by him playing Afro and by Afro preventing himself of losing his mind of him being completely insane they actually added they, they had him add a character that is a, that is his imaginary friend which is voiced by Samuel Jackson as well but this is from a, a comedian aspect and I thought that was creative I thought that was well done and I feel like when it comes to revenge movies or revenge animes or revenge so shows they like to show you the set of how they are going to portray their character by seeking revenge in an outside term but they don't want to show you how, what they're thinking what their motivations is inside their mind are they close to being a serial killer how do they think when it comes to getting revenge are they like the people that has killed the people that they have loved so they can duke it out you know how they say demons have to kill demons but they showed this in a perfect way and they explained it by showing that Afro Samurai is not a serial killer he's not a murderer he actually cares for people he actually wants to love again he wants to care again and by his subconscious his imaginary friend that is also played by Samuel Jackson he is the opposite of, of Afro Samurai he's a kind-hearted person he cracks jokes he breaks the ice when he is outnumbered he actually tells him he's outnumbered he's gonna get fucked up I love how they make that thought processing method with this anime and by me being a kid watching it well I wasn't a kid I was a pre I was, a, I was basically an adult but my mind was not that sharp back then when I was watching the anime at a young age but by me being older I understood why they included him on there so they can let you be aware of what happens when you seek revenge you need to have a source of sanity in your mind left so you can so it can prevent you from being in that darkness forever and I love Samuel Jackson's imaginary friend character now as for the pacing of him what made me like about this about this series is that they have included flashbacks to show you the pacing of how he became a very good sword wielder, a very good samurai, and just how cold-hearted he was. Because he loses more than just his father. As he begins to mature and get older, there are more sacrifices to be made in order for him to obtain what he needs to obtain. Now, some people may have problems with these flashbacks, but I didn't. I felt like these flashbacks was necessary. It wasn't really fast paced, but it, it gave me enough for me to care about the people he met and at the same time of what his standards was when it comes to him seeing how people was in front of him. I thought he was going to be an asshole, but he was a very quiet person and it made sense because his mind was more darker than everybody else because he not just lost his father, he wanted to kill the person who has done this to him, who has tormented him, who was gay, who have gave him this dark road of revenge and at the same time he knows this so when friends and certain people that he has met as a child wanted to try to give him some love and give him some caring nourishment he tries his best to be like that in fact he was close to being a good guy but when he met one person don't want to spoil it but when he met one person he basically kind of gave him an eye-opening gesture told him look if you want revenge 
You have to be prepared to lose those around you. To get revenge means to bear it all in a demonic way. That's where his emotional aspect kicked in, but he had to clinch on to it by having an imaginary friend, and he lost everything to get what he had to obtain. I thought the pacing of his youth character was just as important as him being an adult, and I thought they have done that perfectly. Now let's talk about the enemies. The enemies are no joke. I was getting cyberpunk vibes watching this enemy because most of the enemies on here are cybernetically enhanced. They got rockets coming out of their fucking mouths. They got fiber <laughs> wires. They got, um, you know, like they got so much stuff that you think that the that the um the feudal Japan from back then couldn't even think about having. But this is an anime, so you got to be a little bit on the fiction level, I guess. But I was pulled in. I thought that the enemies was indeed threatening and posing. And I really thought that there was times that Afro could get killed in battle. There was so many times I thought that even though he got, you know, hurt or poisoned or severely injured or about a brink of death or he was knocked out, drugged, fucked up, you name it. There was times where the enemies would try to take advantage by trying to kill him because by him having a number two headband, that means by him having a number two headband, no confusion, that means that you are a challenge to everybody. Whoever obtains a number two headband, it's a free for all for them. But by you being a number one headband, that means you are untouchable. You are a fucking god. And he doesn't care about the number one headband, honestly. He just want to get revenge of his father, which is what I need to explain by the main villain. The main villain is no joke. The main villain, every time you see him, you quench. Every time you see him, you cleanse your, you know, your fucking sheet as you're watching it in the bed. And you'd be like, man, like this guy is no joke. They show very little of him, but just enough for you to know how ruthless he is. He's a trickster. He talks a lot of shit. He taunts people. Even when he killed his father right in front of Afro's eyes. He even told him straight up, this is going to fuck you up. This is going to torment you. Come and fight me. That's essentially what he told him. So he has no remorse at all. Or at the same time, is he also is he aware of how this type of stuff feels when it comes to him losing his loved one? So this anime explains things, but at the same time, they want you to have your own mindset of how things work when it comes to you reading certain enemies and also the main character's motives when it comes to them fulfilling their destiny. This anime was a masterpiece. It still is. But the ending, the way how they have ended it, was great. But they wanted to show you a little scene after that where they were sequel baiting. Nothing but sequel bait. Nothing but just wanting to make you feel as if he, there's still more to do. What is there more to do with this character? He already fulfilled his destiny. Every single person that has made films like this has always fell flat when it came to their sequels. Not one film, I could be wrong. Not one anime, I could be wrong. Not one show, I could be wrong. <laughs> has succeeded when it came to them after they have done what they have done when it comes to them obtaining their revenge. We were still pulled in afterwards. After that, we felt watered down because the threat level is not that big anymore. What else can they do? That's why I have to give this anime shit a little bit because after me, after me watching it, I felt like you could have just ended out that way. There was no need for it to be a sequel, babe. I'm going to have to give Afro Samurai a B. Yeah, it's a pretty low rating for, for the praise I've given it. But I feel like for anime that has a sequel bait to it and just reek sequel bait, there's no need for that for a revenge film that had already satisfied me this is just my opinion okay people may want to see the sequel i have the sequel honestly and i don't want to talk too much about it until i watch it but i just feel as if things like this are not necessary after you do what you do then just leave it the way it is stay tuned for my review on this one because I feel like this is not complete for me to illustrate my point of why I feel like it should have ended on the first Afro Samurai franchise. Until that fateful day, that's all I have to say for today. 
please stay tuned for more upcoming reviews and anime videos hit it your way this is Hugo, your critic teacher and you guys have a good day